Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to answer one of our subscribers' questions about just what the jack and the 39 gram looks like, but as long as we're doing that, we're going to give you all the details in the trunk the way it really ought to be. So stay tuned and see what the jack and the trunk look like. This video is for Manny. We're going to show you in the back first of all. There is waterproof panel board with little button fasteners. These come from Restoration Specialties in Pennsylvania. Up here in the corner where I'm pointing now, we happen to have our, there he is, our nice little junction block. Those junction blocks are very rare. Hopefully you have it in your car when you're doing it. They're almost impossible to find. Looking over here in the trunk, we happen to have one of two holders. Here's the other holder. These are the holders for your spare tire. They're heavy metal that was formed at the factory back then. Your spare tire lays down in a 38 and a 39 gram. And they have a wooden cover made out of plywood. And it uses a long carriage bolt with a large flat washer that goes in the center of the wheel that pulls up against the center of the wheel with a nut on the bottom. That is used to hold this whole assembly together. Down under here, as you notice, because this is sunk in, there's actually about a three by three square on the back of plywood that's actually fastened to the back of this main piece of plywood, which you'll notice is a half inch thick. And that provides for the recess for the carriage bolt. Right here you'll notice how the tire is mounted. This is so you can actually fill the tire while it's in the trunk. And it has a cutout, as you can see, that goes as high as the little lines on your wheel, your little stripes. That's how big the cutout is. And you can, of course, scale off the size of your wheel. This is a 650-16 tire that's here. If we look over here on the side now, we happen to have three of the things related to the jack or tools for changing tires. You have the base of the jack. That's the part I'm pointing to right now. This is the base of the jack. And I'm going to turn it over so you can see what it's really like. Base of the jack comes from a flat piece. They stamped this whole thing. You notice they've got little corners bent down so it would grab onto theoretically dirt. Most roads were dirt back in 1939. You'll also notice when it's pressed, it actually bends in on the sides. That's from the stretching from when they pressed it at the factory. Then you have a sort of speed lug nut wrench that they gave you right here, where you can actually turn the lug nuts off fastening fast, and they're actually bolts, not nuts. Here you have your other tire iron that you can use to pop the actual hubcap off. And you can also use it to start your bolts out. That's on this end. Now, obviously, they wouldn't be set in the car this way, but I set them in the car this way. And will occasionally, if I've used them, come back and respray them with like Krylon black because they were black at the time. You'll notice that this rests on a piece of rubber matting. This rubber matting comes Restoration Supply Company in California. And it's a close match to what was here originally. Underneath it, you'll find that there's this sort of thick tar paper like we've got on the end, which this is original. I've never been able to find this level thickness of a tar paper type material, so I've left the original in here. Underneath, I'll use Dynamat type products, which we've got here, because it was all covered with this tar paper type material if it isn't worn out in your car. Up here on the top, you have a rubber seal that starts out as a, as a bubble on the top and it has a little T-rail this goes into. This comes from Metro Molded Parts. Up here you'll notice this is the way they did the wire for the tail light. They run it through a little wire clip and run it up here to the top. This is an NOS tail light wire. 
I don't know if they actually put a cover over that other than to do this. All of the parts in the actual trunk here, these are original and they were refinished using rubberized undercoating to at least make them black like they would have been. On the sides, you have a rubber hose here and you have a rubber hose here. Originally, these were molded rubber hoses that Graham put in here and they're to direct water from this trough out the wheel wells. Well, I haven't ever found a molded rubber hose that's exactly right, so I make it from a rubber hose large enough and then you use a spring inside of it to form it and then you'll have to use a smaller rubber hose down where it passes through the fender in this area down in here. And that will require a smaller rubber hose, but that causes it to be possible to make that part that is almost certainly shot on the car from 1939. Now the other part of the jack that we're going to show you here is right here. This is Graham's style of jack. It actually is a screw thread, the whole thing, screw thread. On the top, you would turn this nut to raise and lower this little casting which rides on that screw thread and you use that as a bumper jack. So you're actually going to take the jack here out, set this piece on the ground and you set the assembly in there. As far as I know these are extremely rare. It's the only one I've got out of four cars. Somebody had made three of these a few years ago when they were redoing a Hollywood and I've got stuff to do it. I haven't yet done it but I need to remake these because I need multiples for my cars. I don't know if anybody else ever used this jack, but this is what a jack for a Graham looks like and you can see it's nice and dusty. Now, a couple other things to know here besides the jack like that is the fact that supposedly originally these came in sort of like a gunny sack to hold them. I don't do that because it just guarantees everything gets even more scratched up, but that's supposedly what they came with. Down here in the well, there's also rubber matting. There was also the tar paper material, but now has dynamat under the rubber matting. So rubber matting is used here too. So in these two spots, they did use that. And this well is probably where you would have normally carried your jack and tools down in here. One other thing to say about the trunk, I do them with black insides in the back. The reason I do is because I've never been able to determine that they had flocking. Bob Feldes has told everybody that he sees that they were flocked. Well, he has a 40, and the 40s may have been flocked, but I've had a 38, and I've had four 39s now, and I never found any evidence of flocking. So I'm not saying Bob's wrong. I don't know if that's a year thing that they changed in 1940, or if the stuff wore off that bad and I never have seen it. But because I haven't ever seen or found any remnants of it in any of the trunks, I've always just done them in black to make them look decent instead of actually flocking the trunk. So that's about everything we can tell you in general of what goes on here. Save one other thing. I should tell you about this particular rubber piece that comes all the way around. That seal is also from Metro Molded Parts and is available in foot lengths so you have to print, have to measure your total number of feet and order a couple feet extra so that when you fit it you can cut it to size and it's almost for certain sure I don't know what your car will be like but almost always there's rust out in this area because this kind of tips back and the seal is sitting there and the water gets trapped so this is the area where you're most likely to have rust out I've had to fix that on every one of the cars I've had hopefully Manny, that answers your question in depth as to what everything kind of looks like and what to th be looking for for a jack, but I doubt you're ever going to find it. It's probably going to need to be replicated.